Welcome to the Only Roofers podcast. My name's Elizabeth, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Becca Switzer, founder of Roof Sales Mastery. Welcome, Becca. Hi there, Elizabeth. How are we doing today? So the Purple Queen is sporting the Only Roofers blue. That's right. It was a total accident, and I am on trend. <laughs> yes, yes. I am so pleased to have you here. I remember when I was first getting started in the industry in 2015, uh, your channel was one of the first ones I found. Yeah. So I watched a couple of your videos back then. I was trying to get to know roofing sales just because I was trying to understand roofers. What made you upload that first YouTube video? Well, honestly, I'd already started making my course at that time. And I knew, like, I had gone to a couple different conferences, Brendan Burchard and Jeff Walker, basically about, like, monetizing your expertise. And one of the big takeaways I had from it was give away your best stuff for free. Like, yeah. content is king. So when I started putting out my actual YouTube videos, I had already started my course and I knew that I was going to be like this nobody little blonde 20-something <laughs> girl that's like, I can teach you how to sell roofs, yeah. you know, to guys who've been in business for longer than I've been alive. So I'm like, all right, well, I need to put out content that shows people that I have a lot of value to offer. And so I just started putting out like my best quick digestible content and people were like oh damn this girl like knows what she's talking about so what was your like childhood dream of what you wanted to be versus who you are today now not even close <laughs> uh, so I think when I was a little kid I really loved animals like wow. I wanted to do things with animals I've always been obsessed with I love to nurture things so I love caring for creatures probably not gonna ever have kids though so don't even ask <laughs> uh, but I wanted to either be maybe a veterinarian or like a marine biologist or wow. a dog trainer or something. And I still love, instead it turned into me just collecting endless amounts of animals <laughs> in my own home. But that was actually what I wanted to do. And then as I got a little bit older, I really enjoyed writing. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would do something writing or be a journalist. Do you have to write uh, anything now for your courses or do you have like a content writer that helps you? Oh, I do literally everything myself. Like Roof wow. Mastery is me. <laughs> wow. And then I have one administrative assistant that kind of helps impressive. I can't. It was just kind of never my dream. I didn't want to have a bunch of people that I had to manage. Wow. Like some people were like, I want to have a big company. And yeah. that wasn't me. I like to just take care of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Less responsibility at the end of the day. Yeah. Like I would be the equivalent of the number one salesperson in the company, but don't make me the sales manager. Like I don't oh, want wow. to do that. I want to just perform. Yeah. So it makes it easier for me. Um, but yeah. It makes I, it more profitable. For sure. For sure, yeah. Not having to spit, take care of everything else. So that's kind of my thing. But writing, my outlet is every. I write my own content for my, you know, my channels, stuff like wow. that. All my sales copy, and then of course the sales training itself. So. Do you write anything besides uh, roof sales mastery courses? So. I'm you know, nosy. I, I want to know. No, I love this. <laughs> I used to have a blog, but it was. Like, this was like a long time ago, but I like literally could not wait to write things like funny, like funny content, just things about what's going on in the world and stuff like that. Um, and Roofing so dad jokes coming soon. That's right. Any day now. <laughs> and so uh, I have been writing off and on. I love talking about, um, so I read a lot of Buddhist stuff, like spiritual context, um, things about like manifesting your own reality and Absolutely. gaining self-awareness. And so when I do write kind of for fun, I'm putting together things that are just about, I guess if you had to summarize Personal it, development. Yeah, but also like lessening human suffering. Oh. So how to deal with everything from loss, breakups, grief, just practicing acceptance in your everyday life. I really like that type of material. So I have been writing some things. I think someday I have another channel called Nirvana by Nature. Wow. I haven't really done much with it, but it's a concept that maybe someday soon I'm going to write some more content for it, make some That's videos That's what I was about to it. ask you. So a lot of people get to this point of life and they just continue to live it and grow their companies, right? But from your perspective, someone who doesn't want to grow a huge organization, what would be your next step? Is it taking more of the personal development route? Do you want to become a motivation or maybe not motivational, uh, spiritual? awareness yeah. speaker someone that helps enlighten others what do you think your impact is going to be next that's probably the next thing that would make the most sense for me that really kind of comes from the heart like yeah. oh i get passionate about that because i've been teaching roof sales for a long time and it's a very technical thing to teach and i do really enjoy teaching sales like i love sales psychology i love helping people break through like giving them those aha moments it's and like helping my favorite them become financially free and take care of their families 100 percent, because that's something that like i, I think about my own people in my peer circle, like my friends, I'm like, man, they, they're trapped in the nine to five, work till you die type thing. Oh yeah. So 
having the experience that I've had that I'm able to give people tools to like, and it might not even just be roof sales, any type of sales position, to be like, look, if you do this, you will make more money. You'll have financial freedom, personal freedom. So I am passionate about that, but I think if I were to switch gears and go into something else, my uh, my assistant Zane and I always say, there's no female Tony Robbins. It's yeah. like, that should be like you, you should yeah. be doing that. So talking more about like mindset and belief and manifesting and I just love the idea of teaching people more self-awareness because that's when you take real ownership of everything that happens to you in your life. Do you feel like you manifested yourself into Roof Sales Mastery, right? A thousand percent. I, I was just talking about this earlier today. So when I got into selling roofs first, I like had no idea what I was doing, of course. And then I figured it out. Like Within the first year, I was like, oh dang, I figured out like what to do and say. And then the next year happened, I did really well. And so when I decided I was going to create sales training for the roofing industry, I remember I just felt it in my belly just now. Like I remember while I was writing, just a literal fire like in my body. And every day I was so jazzed. I was like, this shit is a million dollar idea. Like I know that it is. I was 100% certain I was going to be a seven figure salesperson yeah. selling stuff that I invented out of my brain. And so it just, it happened and I just visualized it happening. I took action toward it every day and it manifested within like the first 18 months or something. So what, what was your daily action? Was it something specific or consistent or was it just always just try to do something? Gosh, I, I try to even duplicate. That's a great question because today when I try to sit down and duplicate it, yeah. you know, they, they say like necessity is the mother of invention, mm -hmm. right? And at the time I was a hundred thousand dollars in debt. This is a, this is another story, but it's a different, different story. hundred thousand dollars in debt. And I wanted to buy my dream house at the same time. And I'm like, okay, I need to buy a $400,000 home, my first <laughs> home, and I need to get out of six figures in debt, which wasn't my fault, that's some other story. But, so I was like, all right, just work. And so every day, my first two priorities were exercise, so I'd work out, take care of my dogs, so I'd walk my dogs at the dog park, come home, and then I would just sit at my computer and just word dump. Like I would just write, I would get in the zone and just like, Right, 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 right. Sometimes till 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I just did that every single day until I had something that I could put out there to the market. And I just kept doing it because then people were getting excited about it. I was getting a lot of positive feedback on my content. I was getting awesome testimonials. I'm like, this is awesome. So then I kept doing it and making more content. So that's my answer. <laughs> Do you think that you could apply that similar pressure to yourself again to get you to your next phase? or what, because I always love to hear, of course, what gets us where we are, yeah. but what strategies are you gonna use now as a person, right? Now you have personal development, you have a, a fan base, right? right? You have a community, you have skills, you have technical knowledge, you know how to execute, you know how to manifest. What are you gonna think of and how are you gonna do that? So, right, you wanna become the next female Tony Robbins? What's step one? Step one, I think, is really just putting my actual mission into words, like creating a real mission state, like what is it that I want to do? And I think it's really just self-empowerment. Like I want to help people realize that you have everything that you need to be whatever it is that you want to be. And it sounds like such a cliche, but one of my favorite quotes is by Dr. Seuss. And he says, yeah. you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. So like empowering people and just helping them realize it's it's your own mental blocks about things that you think you can or cannot do that's keeping you from doing the next thing or trying the next thing. It's your fear of failure. So I do love talking about those concepts. I can't remember your original question. Oh, what do I do yes, first? Yes, yes. I like clarify. Yeah, you, said, you said it. You answered it. Yeah, yes. clarify what you want. The mission. But then it's just like where I've arrived now where I don't have so much pressure on me is an yeah. interesting place to create out of. Because yeah. when you don't have that pressure, you're like, well, I could do it tomorrow. And <laughs> there's still six figures coming. Like, I don't really need to worry about it. Yeah. So I've put a, I actually recently was just journaling about this, but I'm like, all right, what I have to do, and I put a note next to my computer is you just create every day, just create something. Yeah. Like it might not be the giant, like 15 hour work days that I was doing before, but even if I make one video or I write one outline or I write one blog post, in that direction and I put that out there, that's what you stoke the fire, you just let it burn. Do you think that what what happens to us after we achieve certain goals, we kind of become complacent, right? Like that's kind of, once people become a six figure earner, once they accomplish their seven figure sales goals, right? Do you feel that they get complacent and comfortable? And if you don't, if you if that's happened to you, how do you get out of it? That can definitely happen. Mine actually was sort of shoved down my throat. I've always lived in this weird space of like, 
I am competitive with myself. I put a lot of pressure on myself to be like the best. Like if I'm gonna do something, it has to be perfect and yeah. I'm gonna crush it. Like, uh, and I stay kind of in my lane when I do that. And that's pushed me through being a Cutco salesperson, um, selling roofs and then creating and selling roof sales mastery. What happened to me that kind of forced me to slow down, I went through a divorce, like split up from my former husband. And at the time, like there was such a, devastating experience even though I like I started it I chose to yeah. go down that path it was I was not prepared I'd never gone through grief like that before yeah. and during that time I like couldn't get out of bed for over a year it was yeah. bad but I was still like no if you don't keep doing what you're doing with your business like my business had just kicked off and it was it was doing amazing I'm like if you don't keep doing this like everything's gonna fall apart which was an unhealthy way for my brain to be working yeah but I like kept showing up and eventually I had to accept like my anxiety was not gonna go away if yeah. I didn't just accept that, you know what, you have sort of made it, so like let yourself relax for a second, you know? Yeah, uh, enjoy, but, get the happiness back. Right, like don't panic about if you don't show up every single day, all of a sudden you're gonna be broke or something. Yeah. So I kind of, for me it was a lesson in calming down, like not putting so much pressure on myself, but now I'm in that state where it's like, you had that period of being in the cocoon now you need to like get your Lots shit together. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna ask you a hard question that a lot of people out there might relate to, right? What, when you decided to go through with your divorce, right? There's a lot of times where you marry someone that you're just not compatible for your entire life journey. Right. With. Unfortunately, you know, it's just marriage is not what it was years ago. Right. So with the divorce rate being so high, entrepreneurship being so demanding, how do you feel about marriage moving forward and how did committing to someone kind of that failure does hurt, right? Yeah. You committed to someone, that, that, was, that was a failure. I went to th do something similar. Yeah. But how do you feel about marriage moving forward? How do you encourage other people to identify if they're in a relationship that's gonna help them carry through the ups and downs of life and entrepreneurship? So this is gonna be a messy answer because first of all- It's a messy I, question. It, well, yeah, there's three things I can think of right off the bat. So when I got married, I was 19 when I met oh, wow. my former. I had had zero relationships. This was my first relationship ever. Wow. He was eight years older than me. Wow. And I got married two years later. So when I was 21, I got married to this person. And at the time, I didn't know what I wanted out of my life. I didn't know yeah. what, I had never been in love before. Yeah. And so what I learned later on as I got older and as I started my own business and stuff like that, I realized we had kind of, I think, we got together not because of romantic reasons, but I was his number one salesperson in Cutco. He oh, was wow. my manager. So there's kind of like this business relationship. And when you're 19 or 20 or 21, that's like cool, right? Yeah. Power couple vibes. Yeah, and that's yeah. like, oh, like we're gonna go in this direction. But then after I started my business with Roof Sales Mastery and it took off, and then we weren't doing, it wasn't like really a huge partnership anymore. I realized like now we're just in a relationship but what is our relationship yeah. and there wasn't a lot in common there like I was super ambitious I wanted to be active and I was into fitness and like he just kind of wanted to chill out and, like do nothing yeah <laughs> I hate to say that but that's kind of yeah. what happened and so I'm like huh I can't I only get one life I'm so young yes this can't be we only get one life I want to you only emphasize get one that. Yeah. like you you deserve to be happy and so we decided to split up, and from that point on, I think maybe this was just a defense mechanism in my head because the breakup hurts. Like the divorce sucked so bad. Yeah. Even though I wanted it, I like was totally crushed and really depressed, very anxious. It's failure, honestly. There's no other way to describe it than something that failed. It's like a like you just thought this was yeah. it. I'm married, and now everything's yeah. great. And then you're like, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Yeah. You know. So during. After that period, I mean, there were several years where I was like, I would never get married again. I believe in relationships. I believe in Other love. people's love, but not mine. Well, no, I just didn't want, I'm like, what's the point of getting yeah. married? Which I still sort of believe this. Like, why should the government have anything to do with your romantic relationship? So if you do split up with this person, it makes it really hard to, to split your lives yeah. apart. And I did feel that way for a long time. Uh, but then, you know, you meet somebody else and you're like, I'm deeply in love with this person and maybe I would do it again because there's just, you know, there's you're something to the fun. Now. Right, or like you just see something different with the person you're with then, and you can't predict the future. You don't know what that's gonna mean. I think in the future though, I would just slow down. Like, yeah. all right, if this is working really, really well, we are going in the right direction. And now that I have life experience, I'm not 19 anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm 33. So 
I think it's a very personal decision you have to make and know why you're making it. What would you suggest to someone who is an entrepreneur or someone who's a big hustler, right? Six figure sales, seven figure sales, whatever it is that they're trying to do when they are going to find someone like a significant other, right? Because those are tough lessons you learn of what not to find. Right. But how do you look for what to find, right? Well, if you're somebody who's the entrepreneur, you need somebody in a supportive role. Like if you have two people who are both going like on their journeys, you might not spend very much time together, right? Yeah. And if you have somebody who doesn't have a lot going on in their life, they might feel really intimidated by you yeah, as an entrepreneur. Scared. Or like they're just sort of in your shadow. So you have to find somebody who understands hustling, and maybe they do have their own thing going on, but you have a really big commitment to supporting each other, purposely making quality time for each other. But you've got someone that like supports you and gets what you're doing and can be there to take, you know, travel with you and, and understand the late nights that you might have to have sometimes and the events that you have to go to and, and all of that. So you just have to find two people who are really on their own journeys but can support each other, I think. And one of you is probably going to be more of the supporting role. Yeah. So that's and just... And one person's going to be more of the leader. Right. What, what was, to kind of touch back to what you said earlier, what was one of your first limiting beliefs that you overcame? Man, limiting beliefs. Well, honestly, it came late. So this is something I can share for what, like right now in my life. When I got started, I did have in the back of my mind, it really wasn't a fear. I just knew that I was going to meet some backlash when I like came onto the scene as this little 20 something blonde girl who's like all the first person ever. Purple that's hair. Like, I'm gonna t I didn't have purple hair back oh, then. Okay. But I was like, I'm going to teach you how to sell roofs. And people on the internet were going to be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a thing, but I had so much confidence in my content that I'm like, they might think that for the first 20 seconds of the video, but as soon as I start talking about the thing that I'm yeah. telling them, they're going to learn. As long you know as you it? show up. Yes. So because I was younger, maybe I was just like, I really don't have fears. I just went into it. But later in life, which is so strange, it was after I gained so much more notoriety and like, you know, people know my content and I've sold millions of dollars in my own like yeah, content own training product. Product. For some reason, like you reach a point where you're like, it's like that imposter syndrome thing pops in. <laughs> you're like, do I even know what I'm doing? Why yeah. are people getting like this much? It got this big. Like, you know, do I have value to offer? That's why I love events like this, because when I get to give a talk and so many people come up and they're like, holy shit. Yeah, and they're like, that shit, like light bulbs, light bulbs. Yeah. I'm like, okay, do you know what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's sometimes what really defining your own value. Maybe that's going to help you in your next phase that you were talking about, creating your next why, right? right? So maybe that's recognizing your own value at a consistent, just printing on big letters, Becca Switzer, badass, I have so much value to give to the world, I just need to share it, right? Yeah. So roofing was just the surf. It's been so amazing having you here today. Is there anything that you would share with someone who's on the other side of this lens, uh, watching this one day on YouTube, on their Instagram, on Facebook, that you just want to make sure you touch their heart and help them get to manifesting their own goals in life? Absolutely. Like the question I have is why not you? Like look at anybody who's done anything with their lives, whether it's an athlete or an author or a coach or whatever. There's nothing separating you from those people except action. Action and belief, that's literally it. Like, it's not like people are born with super, we're not talking about somebody who can just like run a four minute mile and that's maybe something you're never gonna do, which you still could, you still almost could. anybody still could. <laughs> yeah. But we're talking about just when you're creating something, like a business or whatever it is, it it's just gonna take time. Like don't let the time it's gonna take from now till the point that you've reached your goal to discourage you from starting because the time's gonna pass anyway. Yeah. Like you have, just like I said with Dr. Seuss, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. He's a G. That's honestly like the best lesson that you can take away. Just start. Awesome. It's really great to share with Becca here today. Uh, we're trying to bring light to a new perspective of each of the amazing individuals who have been on this show. They all have so many amazing stories and the backstory, just learning what the goals for these people are. Biggest things that you've said for me, manifesting, taking action, and your Dr. Seuss quote. So thank you so much. Thank you all for watching another episode of the Only Roofers podcast and catch us on the next one. Bye, everyone.